This video today is brought to you by Extra Wallets. Use the discount code Robbie15 to receive 15% off your first purchase, or head over to the link that's in the description below. Since the first look at Todd Phillips' dark and gritty origin film Joker, the internet went ablaze. Of course, when the film actually came out, the internet was still on fire. Some would argue even more so. I'm going to be completely honest with you all, I have no real opinions on Joker. I don't think it's a cinematic masterpiece that perfectly summarizes the thoughts and opinions of today's culture, but I also don't think it's a disaster that will inspire hate movements or other forms of violence. I think, shockingly I know, that it is just fine. It's fine. Everything about it is fine and good. It's just okay. However, what I do have opinions on is how the film tackles its inspirations, such as Taxi Driver, Network, and obviously The King of Comedy. Using iconic films like that as inspiration for your work is simply dangerous. In my eyes, inspiration is healthy, but if you're not careful, that influence can seep its way into the project you're working on, so much so that you start emulating and replicating your influence instead of questioning or deconstructing it. So without further ado, let us discuss the problem I have with Phillips's Joker, and how it handles imitation versus homage. Tomorrow you'll know that I wasn't kidding and you'll think I was crazy, but look, I figure it this way. Better to be king for a night than schmuck for a lifetime. <laughs> When a filmmaker uses something as inspiration or attempts to pay homage to something, there's usually a reason behind it. Perhaps the director or writer wants to critique this something, shining a light on how misunderstood the thing is. A great example of this can be found in 500 Days of Summer, in which Mark Webb and his writers Scott Norstadter and Michael H. Weber draw a reference to The Graduate. Here, the filmmakers are criticizing how people misinterpret what The Graduate, and more specifically its ending, has to say. This gross misreading is more than just a line of comedy. It influences our opinions on Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character and how he understands romance. Reflecting The Graduate is a conscious choice from the filmmakers, as it actually has something to say and some relevance to the film we're about to watch it actually comes into play at the end of the movie. So what I'm about to say might get me in some hot water, but in Joker, what is the point of referencing Taxi Driver or the King of Comedy every five minutes? Sure, those Martin Scorsese directed films are beautifully made, gorgeous to look at and feature two incredibly different and yet equally phenomenal performances from Robert De Niro. But what relevance do they have to the story of Joker? In the movie, it's not like Arthur Fleck watches The King of Comedy or Taxi Driver and grossly misunderstands them. Those films don't exist, at least to our knowledge, in the world of Joker. Phillips uses these cinematic techniques that Scorsese helped pioneer in a mainstream way, such as the morally corrupt antagonist, and just does it again. I think inspiration is fundamental to making anything. I mean, look at Quentin Tarantino's entire filmography. He references, pays homage, and copies a lot. But at the end of his films, you tend to understand why he has done that. Django Unchained, for example, the director uses the spaghetti western genre as influence to tell a story that you would never see in a classical spaghetti western. One interpretation that I've heard about Joker's use of Scorsese's films and cinema from the 1970s in general is this idea that as a collective society, we haven't progressed at all since the 1970s. What Phillips is suggesting with Joker is the cinematic equivalent of, hey, look how bad it still is. And sure, while that may be true, why specifically reference Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy if your thesis statement isn't exactly specific to those movies, but rather history in general? Rupert, who are you talking to? Mom! What is it? Please stop calling me. I find the imitation of Scorsese's work in Joker to be borderline frustrating. I don't think Todd Phillips is untalented, actually I think the opposite. The movie kind of loses its relevance or grit because it's subconsciously trying to be something else. I mean, let's be honest here, of course the movie works because it's using these iconic fucking movies as a blueprint. You would have to majorly fuck it up to not at least get a good movie 
as a result of using the cinematic language of Taxi Driver in The King of Comedy as frequently as Joker does. At the end of Joker, Arthur Fleck doesn't really learn anything. Sure, he has a revolt that rises up as a result of him, but what does that have to do with The King of Comedy or Taxi Driver? In 500 Days of Summer, the filmmakers implement this idea that the lead character of the film misinterprets the ending of The Graduate as a romantic and positive one. Because of this miscalculation, Tom Hansen completely misunderstands love. 500 Days of Summer actually has something to say regarding the film it wants to reference. In Phillips' movie, the use of Scorsese's work, or network, just comes across as totally synthetic. It's more an aesthetic choice than a narrative or thematic one. It exists because it gives the movie a nice prestige sort of look. It doesn't impact the character or inform the audience of anything new. It just repeats what a very iconic and established filmmaker said almost 40 years ago. Bruh. I'm sorry, yeah. what's that? <laughs> oh, that's very funny, Maria. You know, I'm also a comedian. Would you oh, like to hear Jerry, a joke? I love this guy. Always comes yeah? up with these great lines. Oh, I, you? Love, I love him. Okay. You're wonderful. I don't know what I'd do without you. Knock. Anyway. Knock, knock. That's Now, like I said at the start of the video, I don't hate the Joker movie. I think Walking Phoenix is incredible, but I just wish the movie had a little more confidence in itself and what it actually wants to say. I wish Phillips wasn't so hesitant to rely on his own ideas and opinions, as that's what I look for in these sort of movies. I want to see a filmmaker express their take on a problem or society or situation. What I don't want is a filmmaker attempting to express an opinion on a problem or situation under the guise of another filmmaker. One thing I absolutely hate about going to the gym or the supermarkets or whatever is carrying around a big and bulky frickin' wallet. It drives me insane. I hate the weight, I hate how big it is, I just hate carrying unnecessary shit. Luckily for myself and potentially you, there is Exter Wallets. Exter Wallets are ultra slim, beautifully designed and trackable. Oh, and they have instant card access. I literally do this four or five times a day. Each Exter product is handcrafted from the highest quality genuine leather available around the world. Sourced from LWG gold rated tanneries, who serve only top of the line luxury leather brands. Every product that makes it through Exter's design process adheres to the company's five criteria that distinguish their products from others, and let's be frank here, lesser ones. Efficiency, safeguarding, innovation, quality, craftsmanship, and most importantly, style. If you are in desperate need of a slimmer, more stylish wallet, please look no further than Exter. My viewers can receive 15% off their first purchase by using the discount code Robbie15, or by clicking the link that's in the description now. So normally when I get YouTube sponsorships or whatever, I, it's hard to say no because money, but Exter is one that I genuinely believe in. I, I absolutely hate going to the gym or going to the movie cinemas or going to the supermarket and carrying around a big and bulky wallet. It drives me insane. I hate carrying extra weight when it's not necessary to do so. And most importantly, my wallet isn't really that stylish. Until about two years ago, I had a Velcro wallet, so you can just imagine what I have now. What I love about the extra wallets is just how easy they are to use, how stylish they are, and I absolutely love, like love, 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 the tracking little doodad they have here. It's amazing. It tracks your phone from the wallet and it can also track your wallet from your phone. It's, it's incredible and I definitely recommend you guys at least try it out. Guys, thank you so much for watching this week's video. Uh, before I go, I just want to give another shout out to Exter. Uh, use the discount code Robbie15 to get 15% off your first purchase or click the link that's in the description below. Just another little thing about The Traveller, uh, regarding the liftoff sessions, the movie got through. Uh, it's a finalist, which means that it will be screened next year at Pinewood Studios, which is freaking amazing. And I just want to give a huge, huge shout out to everyone for supporting the movie. 
it really means a lot to me. So again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye.